Let me start, guys, by explaining you structure of Linux file system. Linux files and directories are located in a tree-like structure. At the root, there is a root directory that is represented simply by forward slash. Then this root directory has some subdirectories like bin, sbin, etc, and so on. Those subdirectories may have own subdirectories and also files. It means that every directory could be considered as a branch of this tree, and every file is a leaf. And again, all those branches and leaves start from root directory represented simply by forward slash. When any user logs into Linux system, he or she actually logs into own home directory. And the home directory of every user is represented by tilde sign. That's why we see the sign here after logging into Linux system. All right, next, you could uh, find the current directory you are currently in by entering the following command pwd that stands for print working directory. Let's press enter and now I see that I am located in slash root folder. Please notice that absolute paths in Linux start from forward slash. And here we see actually absolute path to specific folder, to specific directory. If I go to other Ubuntu virtual machine and type pwd here, I'll see that the home folder for this Bogdan user is different here. And it is slash home slash Bogdan. And this path differs from this path. And difference here appears because here we are locked in as root user into Linux Docker container. And in this case, I am locked in as regular user. And home folders for all regular users are located in the home folder located in the root directory. All right, next command. You are able to cd to root of the file system in Linux computer using the following command cd and forward slash. Forward slash represents root directory in any Linux operating system. Let's cd to root directory. And notice that the command prompt here was changed. And now I see forward slash instead of tilde sign. And if I type pwd here now, I'll see that now I'm located in root directory. You could always go back to your home directory for your locked in user by entering simply cd like this. And now I am back into home directory and if I type pwd, I see path to my home directory for this root user. It is simply slash root. All right, that's how you could change directory and move either to home folder or to root folder. Next, let me demonstrate you how you could move into specific folder. For example, if I list the files and folders here in home folder for this root user, I will see actually empty list. And that means that there are no files and folders inside of the home directory for this user. And if I go to root folder like so and list files and folders here, I'll see such folders as etc, home, media and so on. If you want to go into specific folder, for example, let's go into run folder. You could type cd and type either relative path or absolute path. If you are already located in specific folder, you could use relative path. And in this case, I could simply type run, like so. And now I'm inside of the run folder. And if I enter pwd now, I'll see that now I'm inside of the slash run folder. And this path that starts with forward slash is absolute path. And you are always able to go into specific folder using absolute path to this folder. Let me show you that. For example, let's list folders here and let's cd into mount folder like so. Here again, I'm using relative path. And now here, if I'll enter cd forward slash boot, I'll go into the boot folder located in the root directory. Enter, and now I'm inside of the boot folder. That's because I have just used absolute path. All right, that's how you could move into specific folder using either relative path or absolute path. Also, let me show you now what is the meaning of dot and two dots here when you use cd command. If I type simply cd and dot, nothing will change because dot represents 
current working directory. This directory, pwd, in this case, slash boot. But if I type cd and two dots, I'll go one level up to the parent directory. And in this case, I'll go to root directory, cd, two dots, and now I'm inside of the root directory, represented by slash. Alright, let me now show you how to use tab in order to autocomplete names of the directories and files. If I type here cd slash and press tab twice, I'll see all possible directories and files that are located in the root folder. And if I type, for example, m and press tab twice, I'll see all possible directories and files that start with m. If I add additional letter here, e, and press tab only single time, I'll see that uh, this folder name will be auto-completed to media. That's because now there is just a single option that starts with ME. Alright, if I press tab twice now at this moment of time, I see actually empty list and that means that uh, media directory does not have any subdirectories. Let me remove media from here and uh, let's go into etc folder like so. And if I press tab now twice, I see all possible options of file names and directories that I could use after etc. And for example, here I see skel folder, and if I type here skel and press tab, I'll see that the directory name will be autocompleted to skel. If I press tab now here, I see that there are only files called .bash logout, .bash rc and .profile, and there are no subdirectories inside of the skel directory. Alright, let's suppose that I want to go into this directory. For this, I'll remove this last dot that was autocompleted and press enter here. And now I am inside of the etc skel directory. Let me clear terminal. And if I enter pwd, I'll see this absolute path that starts always with forward slash. Alright, if I want to go out from this skel folder, I could simply type cd and two dots. It will go one level up to etc directory. Let me go back to skel cd skel. Here I could use relative path because I'm already located in etc directory and press enter here. And let's suppose that I want now to go to another subdirectory of etc directory. For that, I could simply type cd, two dots, then forward slash. And if I press tab twice here at this moment, I'll see all possible directories and files inside of the etc folder. And for example, let's go to dpkg directory. Let's start typing dp, press tab, yes, it was auto-completed, let's press tab twice here, and I see that this dpkg directory contains origins subdirectory. Let's go into it, I could type simply o and press tab, it will be auto-completed, and let's press tab twice here, and I see several files. Notice that at the end of every directory, there will be forward slash. And that's how I recognize that this is directory and this is also directory, but this is file. And now I see that this origins directory contains only three files, Debian, default and Ubuntu. All right, let's press enter and now I'm inside of the origins directory. That's how you could use uh, two dots in order to go into parent folder and go into some subfolders of that parent folder. Great, let me type simply cd and I have returned back to my home directory and uh, type pwd, I'll see that now I'm again inside of the slash root folder. And again, this directory is a home directory for root user. And please notice that there is a difference between slash root directory and simply slash directory. Slash directory is a root directory for all files and folders in Linux. It is a root of file system in Linux. But slash root is subfolder that is located in the root of file system in Linux and it represents home directory for root user. Please keep in mind that. Alright, that's all what I wanted to explain you here in this lecture, and now you understand what is the difference between root directory, absolute path and relative path, and how to locate the current directory you are currently in. That's all for this lecture, and next let me explain you how to manage files, how to create new files, and how to list files. 
I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.